الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبی وسلم اما بر حبت فلّہ فرام دا پرولز آف امام بن باز رحیم اللہ تعالی وچ از ایکسلنٹ ایڈوائس فار اس اباؤٹ دی امپورٹنس آف ریزنگ آر چلڈرن اینڈ دس از ایکسلنٹ ایڈوائس دیٹ یو این آئی کین بینیفٹ فرام فار دوز ہو آر ایدر ہو ہیو فیملیز اور دوز ہو انٹینڈ ٹو ہیو اے فیملی that this is very important, and this all comes from a question that the Imam was asked. And the questioner said, I have noticed, O eminent Sheikh, that there are many of the fathers who have been neglecting and raising their children, leaving them to engage in things which are of the highest level of detriment to them. Due to this, I seek from your eminence that you favor us by directing the fathers to give much importance to their children, especially in this time, may Allah reward you with good. The Shaykh replied, uh, replied Ta'ala, by saying, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the, merc the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, may peace and blessings be upon his messenger, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and those who are guided with his guidance. As to what follows, This which the questioner mentioned deserves attention. Because watching over the children, males and female, and giving them attention and their Islamic cultivation is an important affair which is from the most important matters. So here the Shaykh is mentioning the importance of giving attention to our children. And one of the things that we find, even uh, you know, from psychologists, that they realize uh, from practical studies that oftentimes that women who are who uh, are girls that do not receive the kind of attention uh, and affection and care from their fathers often they crave that in negative ways when they become older either if they're blessed to have it from a husband or either through their experiences and trials and tribulations as they grow older. They look for it elsewhere. So they look for that affection and that attention and that male, uh, from a male figure, often through in, in negative ways. So this shows us the importance, of course, for the boys and the girls, but especially the girls, to give them that uh, attention and those things which they require in order to protect them and f help fulfill a, a potential void that can grow and that can be filled with negative. Wallahu musta'an. And the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, each of you is a shepherd and each of you is responsible for his flock. The man is a shepherd over his family and he's responsible for his flock. The emir who has been placed in charge of the people is a shepherd, and he is resp responsible for his flock. The woman is a shepherd within the house of her husband, and she is responsible for her flock. The servant is a shepherd over his master's wealth, and is responsible for his flock. Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Indeed, each of you is a shepherd, and each of you is responsible for his flock. Uh, Imam Bukhari reported it in his Sahih as well as others. So in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we, we see the importance. This hadith gives us the assess or the foundation of the importance of responsibility that is delegated by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and that it is responsibility that we should fulfill. The Amir meaning the leader of the community or the leader of the Muslims, that they have a responsibility to those who they rule over with regards to their wealth, their property, and their and decision-making. Likewise, the ruler of the household, which is the man, that the man has a responsibility for raising his family, protecting them from harm, taking care of them, uh, financially, physically, mentally, and even their spiritual well-being, that he is to be concerned with all of those things. And so on and so forth. And the woman, she is also uh, is responsible for taking care of the home and responsible for the children. So they both have a share in this uh, as the Messenger of Allah, alayhi 
Salatu Wasalam said. Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala said So this great hadith indicates the obligation of giving importance to one's flock. The greatest of responsibility in that is that of the Imam who is over the people and he is the Amir of the Muslims and their Sultan. It is obligatory upon him to watch over them regarding all that which contains their rectification and the safeguarding of their religion and giving attention to that which will benefit them in the dunya, meaning this life, as well as the hereafter, in accordance to his ability as much as he can. The greatest of that is to give attention to the religion so that they are upright upon it and that they cling to it. And that is by the way, by way of performing the obligatory duties and leaving the prohibited, as is obligatory upon everyone who is in charge of the affairs of the people to rules between them with the Sharia of Allah and to make them hold fast to the legislation of Allah. And he is not to rule between them with other than the legislation of Allah. He is responsible for that as he, the majestic and high, has stated. So by your Lord, we shall certainly call all of them to account for all that they used to do. And this is in Surah Al-Hijr, uh, verse 92 and 93. Likewise, as in this authentic hadith, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ul an ra'iyatihi. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Each of you is a shepherd and each one of you is responsible for his flock. So therefore, he who is placed in charge over the people is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. We ask Allah to give the leaders of the Muslims tawfiq and all that which contains their rectification and the rectification of all the Muslims. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. A point I want to mention, Habit Fillah, is that Imam bin Baz, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he supplicated for the Muslim rulers. And this is very important that we follow this madhab, this way, this minhaj of the Salaf al Salih. And that we're not distracted by the people of Hezbiyah, whether it be the Tekfiriyin, whether it be those whose heart is weak and they already have a detest, they detest the leaders. We're not getting paid or sponsored by the leaders to articulate this and convey this message to you. But rather, we hope to seek to gain the reward of Allah in following the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَطِيُوا الرُّسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لُكُمْ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And those charged in authority over you. So we hope that even with the sinfulness, even if a leader is sinful, as is the madhab of the salaf, coming from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in many authentic ahadith, that if the leader is sinful and wicked and oppressive, even then we should supplicate for them. Even then we should not rebel against them. And this is what the ahadith, and go back to Sahih al uh, Sahih al Muslim, Sahih Muslim, uh, and you'll find in the chapter of uh, Imara, the chapter of leadership, you'll find countless uh, ahadith which illustrate the importance. For example, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Asam'i wa ta'ala mariya al Muslim fi ma yuhibbu wa qariya, ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin, fi idha umira bi ma'asiyatin, fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam said, uh, Hear and obey the Muslim authority in that which you love and that which you hate. As long as uh, uh, as long as they do not call you to obedience to Allah, because if they call you to obedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and obeying, meaning in that amr, in that command. And that is the itiqad, 
and the madhab and the minhaj and the fiqh of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That in the issue that the leader, for example, the leader tells you to take insurance. For now, nowadays, we pretty much have to take insurance wherever you are. If you don't, you'll be bankrupt on the street pretty much. And in many of the societies, even in Muslim societies, they will not serve you or you will be, uh, you will have a, a, a great, great difficulty. So it's ijbari. They forced you, you forced your hand to take insurance or they forced your hand to do other things. The point is, is that in those acts of obedience, if the leader says to you that you must do riba, for example, which is clear, then you do not obey them in that issue of taking riba. You do not have to take riba. But if he forces you and says he's going to kill you for that, then that's something different. That's uh, ikra. So that's that's a whole different mas'ala. We're not going to get into that. But the point is, according to the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, who said, فَلَا سَمْعَ وَلَا طَعَ that if the leader calls you to disobedience to Allah, there's no hearing and obeying. So even if you, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, وَإِنْ أَكَلَ مَالَكْ وَضَرَبَ ظَهْرِكْ That even if he uh, takes your wealth and he beats your back, meaning he oppresses you, that you have to obey the Muslim leader, you'll get your recompense from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whereas many of the people, they feel the necessity to pray against the leaders and to speak about the leaders day in and day and night in open gatherings and in secret gatherings and encourage the people against the leaders even if we know we see sometimes the leaders doing open sins but that doesn't give us a license to speak about them because what is the maslaha you have to ask yourself what is the maslaha sharia for you to continue, for example, if we see munkar in a, a Muslim country, but we live in America and you're going to speak about that leader, tell me one maslaha of that for the people in your society. I don't think we can really think of any benefit, but instead we can think of more the negative consequences of possibly backbiting or at best creating great, greater rancor in the hearts of the people. And since I've been back here in America for... Uh, just a week and a half or what have you, almost everyone who asks me about Saudi Arabia, that's the first thing they say. Oh, things are changing. What about the leaders? What about the leaders? What about the leaders? No, they don't ask me about anything else. That's the first point of reference is what about the leaders? What's going on now? And so it shows that we have to begin to shift our priorities back to the priorities of the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That doesn't mean we just sit and sleep and, every, and we're unaware of what's going on around us. No, but it means how do we operate? How do we, uh, what is the minhaj? What is the methodology for dealing with that and dealing with the munkar of the leaders? And is it to speak on the member? Is it to openly... Uh, attack their honor and belittle them in front of the eyes of the people or to cause rebellion in Thawrat? Or is it the madhab of the Salaf, which is Ahkam wa Aslam, and that is to supplicate for the leaders? And we have countless texts. Go to Imam Barbahari's uh, uh, Shara Sunnah. Go to Imam uh, Tahawi, uh, Aqidat Tahawiyah. Go to Al uh, 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 uh the the name of the, the book of Imam al lakai Go back to all of those books of the As-Sunnah lil-Khalal. Go to As-Sunnah Imam Ahmed. So many books of the Salaf which show us the Aqidah and the methodology of the Salaf in dealing with the Muslim rulers. But akhtarhum la ya'lamun. Most of the people don't know. Then... The Sheikh, he said, likewise, every person is responsible for his household. So the father is responsible for his children and the mother is responsible for her children from the perspective of cultivate, cultivating them Islamically, commanding them with the good and forbidding them from evil and making them cling to the truth and abandoning that which opposes the legislation of Allah. From that is the affair of the prayer. From that is the affair of the prayer. For it is the supporting pillar of Islam. So it is obligatory upon the father to give attention to his children and likewise the mother so that they are upright upon the prayer and so that they safeguard it in the houses of Allah along with the Muslims. Allah the Almighty and Majestic says, Hafidhu ala salawat, 
Wasalatul Wusta. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, guard strictly the five obligatory salawat, five daily prayers, especially the middle prayer, Salatul Wusta. And this is Salat al Asr. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, wa aqimu salat wa atu zakat wa arka'u ma raki'in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and perform a salat and give zakat and bow down submit yourselves with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with the raki'in or raki'un meaning those people along with the other believers who bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you should pray with the believers you should be a part of that believing body worshiping Allah azza wa jal coming together on the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming together in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem wa'tasimu bihablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraku hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide and we ask Allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad